morning, everyone, and welcome to Understand and Embrace Diversity. I will be your facilitator today. My name is Terry J. Walker, and I just love being able to be with my Tennessee peeps. So welcome, 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 everyone, to Understand and Embrace Diversity. Um, I'm a big advocate for this little acronym, so I want you to put in the chat what you think it stands for. So pull your chat box out because I want to hear from you. This is a very big, important topic, and I want to hear and I think we can learn from one another. So I am a big advocate for this little acronym, and I want you to put in there what you think this may stand for. The acronym is LNT. LNT. So put in the chat what you think this acronym may stand for. And as we're doing that, I'll give you a little bit about me. I have been working in the mental health arena for many, many years. And then I took a sabbatical and went to work in the medical sales and service industry. And so I, as you can imagine, I work with a lot of diverse populations and personalities. And I believe that we all have unique skills and abilities and we all have creative ideas to help bring good, positive, creative solutions to the table. So put in the chat what you think LNT may stand for. Then someone told me the other day, lettuce and tomato. So I'm going to tell you what it's not. It's not a lettuce and tomato. But I see you guys are putting this in there. And uh, someone put love never tires. I love that. Uh, learn new things, leave no trace, leave nothing there. Licensed nurse technician, there you go. Listen, not talk, I love it. Learn together, licensed nurse tech, okay. Learn and teach, Le lead now team. Lead now team, because we've all got a lot of teams we can help lead. Love, nurture, touch, I love it. My use of this acronym, and somebody guessed it on here, but my use of this acronym today is, and we will talk about it even a little bit more, is simply having the willingness to learn new things. So keep that in mind as we move along and have that willingness to learn new things. Also, I want you to put in the chat what you hope to gain from today's presentation. And we all need to know that we can be more mindful of our thoughts, our actions, and how we treat others. So put in the chat too, what you hope to gain from today's presentation, because I would love to hear that. Again, we all can have the willing and ability to learn new things, and we all can learn from one another because I'm just the lowly presenter here today, and I want to learn from you too. Uh, someone put, be more mindful. That's exactly right. And hope to gain a better perspective of diversity and how I can improve. I love it. A different perspective to speak up more awareness of others' needs and to hope to gain new ideas, keeping my mind open and connecting with others. I love it. Having a different perspective. You know, a lot is about perspective and how we see things. New practices and be more open and accepting and a new perspective and embracing diversity and being more empathetic. Different perspectives. I love it. Hoping to gain new perspectives and learn more strengths and benefits of diversity and a better understanding of how I can be more inclusive. Absolutely. Practical steps of improving and having eyes to see those around me. I love it. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. So let's get on with that. I love it. You guys are really on it. This is my first time. Okay, we've got a newbie to come to a meeting and would like to know about the perspectives of diversity. And I want to talk just a little bit about perspectives. I am a, a, a pure advocate and, and a understudy of Dr. Wayne Dyer, and some of you may have heard of him. But the thing about it is that I want to tell you today about perspective is when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. So when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So thank you so very much for putting stuff in the chat. I love to learn from you. And we're going to talk about a little bit of identification and resolution. We're going to talk some about the cultural iceberg and the valuing and advantages of diversity. And we're going to talk just a little bit about the Johari witness because due to time, we're going to move through some of this. But I do want to hear from you 
the importance of those internal messages, those I statements, and then see the big picture again. When we learn to change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. So let's move right on into some of this, and we're going to explore different diversity issues. We're going to discuss the importance of communication on challenging topics, being willing to be an ally and being open to speaking up and not letting others be put down and we just stand there. We want to be able to discuss how one's own culture influences workplace behaviors and examine different cultural styles and values of different groups. So let's dive right on in and talk just a little bit about identification and resolution. You know, when we talk about identifying or confronting or discussing a challenging topic or problem, it may be the re best recourse if the situation is interfering with our work environment. So what are some things that we can do? One, we can stay calm. I am also a Jack Canfield trainer, and you might want to write this down. E plus R equals O, and that simply stands for event plus response equals the outcome. So whatever the event may be, our response to it equates to the outcome. Put in the chat for me, what are the things we can control? Tell me what we can control. And so I want to hear from you. What do you think we can control in this world on this journey? Our response, our actions, our words, our attitudes, Ooh, you guys are racking it up. Our response is only our temper, our feelings, our response, our tongue. <laughs> there you go. Our actions, the things that we can control. You guys are right. The things we can control are our thoughts. Ooh, somebody mentioned, miss, miss that. Our thoughts, our words, our emotions, our actions, and of course, that all equates to our response of how we are the things that we can control so what are what are our thoughts have we ever stopped to take a look at that and where that all begins because these are things we can control we can't control what other people say what other people think what other people do but what we can control are what we think what we say what we do and our responses to it in other words we can control our ways of being thinking and doing. So we want to make sure that we're able to stay calm in a particular situation. E plus R equals O. If there is an event that someone is very upset, maybe it's our child, maybe it's a teammate, it's a colleague, someone, you know, maybe someone's really upset. That's the event. Our response to that event is that we continue to escalate with that person. And we get angry and we get upset. And what happens with the outcome? Words may get said that can't be taken back. Feelings get hurt. Maybe something gets broken. Maybe someone gets hurt. But if we take that same event and we say someone's getting upset and our response is to remain calm or to remove ourselves back from the situation and then come back and talk about it at a different time, when everyone has had the time to calm down and that becomes our response, then the outcome is much more improved because we've improved the communication. We've not allowed ourselves to get upset and the outcome is much more improved. So those are some things that we definitely want to take into consideration of what we can identify and how we can resolve it. Someone put our thoughts, want to judge other people's hair, clothes, actions, and blah, blah, blah. Very true. We judge a lot of things about a lot of other people. But as I mentioned, we are in a world that is diverse. Whether it's our color of our eyes, our hair, our skin, our traditions, our gender, our gender identity, our race, our religion, our ethnicity. We need to learn to be more accepting and understanding and get to know things about it. Because what I wrote, even in one of my books, is that people tend to judge those things that they do not know or understand. Someone put on here that they can't hear. Can you all, obviously you're responding and that person may need to check their um, 
their um, speaker system. Thank you that you can hear me. So we want to make sure that we're able to do that. We want to be able to communicate with one another and also have that willingness to compromise. We can always agree to disagree, but when we draw a line in the sand, then we just create resistance. Maybe what we need to do is have that willing to willingness to compromise. Again, E plus our response equals the outcome. We can find time to pull that person aside if they're at work and to have a conversation about what is going on and to problem solve or to brainstorm techniques so that each party's needs feel heard and feel like maybe they've been met. We can take time and take care to not allow abusive words and behaviors in our vicinity. We can be an ally to someone and call out that we don't have, we don't talk about things like that here. We don't make fun of this particular population in this workplace or in this setting. We can be a mediator and bring in a third party if need be, or maybe we are the third party. You know, there's two sides to their story, their side and their side, and then the truth. So maybe we could actually begin to mediate. And so each person feels heard and validated and recognized. So these are some things that we can do uh, on a regular basis and be willing to be an ally, be willing to call out when we're hearing jokes or people making fun of other people or being rude to other people. So those are the things that we can definitely do. Someone said that they did have to change their speaker setting and they can hear now. So thank you so very much for letting me know. Um, the cultural iceberg. If you got a piece of paper, you might want to draw this down. You want to make a bit, a, a half of a, a, a TB, if you will, or a, a triangle, just like so, like this. And then, about a third of the way up the triangle, make a squiggly line. This is basically what's called the cultural iceberg. Those things that we can see, we can see the iceberg at the top of the water or that squiggly line, but what's underneath there, we cannot necessarily see. So tell me what you can see on the cultural iceberg what is it that you can see that would go above the line? And make a list of a few things, but put in the chat what you can see that would actually be above the line on this cultural iceberg. And I'm watching, so tell me what you can, what, what is it that we can actually see? Sex, color, skin, clothing, gender, skin color, age. Yep, those are the things that we can, that we can see that would be above the line. Now tell me some things that may be below the line, those things that maybe we don't necessarily see. What are some things that might be below the line? Religion, beliefs, absolutely. Maybe even some disabilities. Preference, orientation, exactly. Uh, all kinds of different people with different age, color, race, yes. Uh, their past, that's right, their history, what are their experiences, what are the things that they have been through, maybe their intent, their health, their values, uh, their marital status, absolutely, these are things, uh, their socioeconomic status, potentially, their religion, and uh, their economic, socioeconomic status, yes, absolutely, so those are things that may fall below the iceberg, on the cultural iceberg. So we definitely want to make sure that we are not making those unconscious snap judgments about people based on a few characteristics that are above the line that we see with the naked eye. Someone even put morals and their beliefs and all of those types of things. So those are things that we can't necessarily see, but a lot of us, what we see with our eyes that is the way that person is, and we attempt to place them in a specific category based on maybe our own thoughts 
or something that we have experienced in the past or what our fear-based beliefs may see. Um, so these are things that definitely someone put, can you see my text? Yes, oh, I can see uh, your uh, chat. I can see what you're putting in the chat. So these are things that we definitely want to see that we're not making snap quick judgments on things about basically maybe a judgment of what we see or maybe something that we have experienced in our past. And so we see someone that looks that way and maybe we had a poor experience in the past with someone who looked that way. And so we've categorized them in that particular bucket. So we want to make sure that we are understanding the cultural iceberg and that we are not judging those things that we may not truly know or understand or placing someone in a category based on maybe an experience that we had with someone else a long time ago or based on something that someone else may have told us about that particular religion, that particular ethnicity, that particular gender identity, if you will. So we want to make sure that we're not doing that because we are in a, melt, a melting pot of multiculturalism. And in today's workforce, it's becoming increasingly diverse. And chances are that many of the people that you work with each and every day are not exactly like you. Again, we all have unique skills and abilities, and we all can bring a piece of the puzzle to the table to create a beautiful, glorious picture. We can create, we can learn from one another, we can grow with one another, we can educate one another about our own beliefs and be willing to listen uh, to others and their beliefs. Doesn't mean we have to always jump right in and be a part of that, but we can learn from these things. And we can also help to teach our children to do the same. So what are some of the advantages of diversity? Well, for the organization or the workforce, it provides a competitive edge because it brings in and attracts people with different backgrounds, with different experiences, with different types of education to be able to bring solutions to the table. You know, you've all heard, don't come to the table with a problem, but rather come to the table with a solution. That's exactly right. And people with diverse experiences, education, backgrounds, cultures can all bring some good ideas and creative ideas to help for company growth or organizational growth and provide that competitive edge. It provides better job security and more opportunities for growth and even, again, creativity, flexibility, and potential because we can all learn from one another. We can learn from our teammates. We can learn from our supervisors. Our supervisors can learn from us. So it can go from the top down. It can go from the bottom up and it can go across the board and it expands the talent pool and provides more opportunities again we all have experiences we all have creative ideas we all have values and instead of judging that why can we not be more open and aware and understanding and having that willingness to lnt have that willingness to learn new things from one another you know um, a scientific study that was actually done or, uh, in 1956 actually showed that medical scientists performed especially well when they maintained ongoing work relationships with colleagues who had a wide assortment of values, experiences, and disciplines. And then in 1984, uh, they found that problem solving is best handled by a heterogeneous group in which diversity of opinion, knowledge, and background allows a thorough airing of new ideas and alternatives. So these are some things that can help us, even in the workforce, to be better able to compete 
to be more successful, even in the marketplace, to provide that better job security and even greater creativity, flexibility, and potential. You know, a diverse workforce actually provides ongoing opportunities for challenges and to stimulate the team and the group and also helps to expand horizons and personal growth. If we're willing to grow personal on a personal level, there is no other alternative but to help us to grow on a professional level. It all begins with you. And this quote with Stephanie C. Hill, it is a truism that the best teams are greater than the sum of their parts. I believe that it is only true when those parts are diverse and when everyone looks the same or acts the same or thinks the same, is it any wonder that they often fail to embrace or even produce innovative and unconventional ideas? So we're gonna play a little game here. This is not scientifically proven, but I do wanna talk about the difference in like diversity. So I want you to put in the chat what your birth order is in your family. Are you the number one born? Are you a middle child? Are you the baby? Are you the last child? Are you the only child? Any of those things. Oh, I'm getting a lot of middles and twos and last and first and uh, fourth. Oh my gosh, you guys have got it going on. And uh, the baby and the last child, I'm the baby. But my brother's actually 14 years older than I am. So I think, you know, I was a late in life or so I don't know if I was kind of an only child or a baby, but uh, we, we've got that going on best for the last. They save the best for last. I love it, someone put in here. So we've got first, middle, last, one, two out of four, all of those kinds of things. So we've got all kinds of birth orders here. And uh, somebody else put first and they got all the brunt of the discipline. Yeah, that's usually what happens. And then some who come along afterward, middle, child, they actually um, end up having to compete with, well, you weren't like your brother or sister in my class. They were really smart or they were a good athlete or all those kinds of things. You know, you've heard those things too. Uh, somebody said they have 15, 14, 12 years difference uh, between them. Woo, that's a long time. That's a lot of kids over a long time. Um, so yes, that's that's great. And so First, last, and middle, it's complicated. Okay. And uh, no, he got everything. So with that being said, in the birth order of the diversity, and again, this is diverse. This is a part of diversity as well. So in our birth order, and again, this isn't scientifically proven, so I'm going to give that little disclaimer, but I'm going to give you some information about where you may fall. So listen up. It is a thought that most leaders come from the firstborn group. So most leaders come from the firstborn group and they're often seen as domineering, pushy, critical, and moody. <laughs> and so there's the firstborn. Again, this isn't scientifically proven, but if you are firstborn or you have an older sibling who was, do they kind of fall in any of that category? Middleborn are often thought of as peacemakers. They have a greater sense of justice and fairness because they were often left out and felt that though, as though they weren't getting their fair share. So does any of you fit or see any of that potentially in the middleborn? Again, this isn't scientific proven. Uh, someone put guilty, but <laughs> yep, they, they got in that one. Absolutely. And then the last born. And that's that's where I fall. I'm definitely the peacemaker in the middle. Yes. Yeah, so these are things. This is just a fun thing to kind of get the difference, even in the diversity of where we fall in our birth order. And uh, I don't have really an only child, but uh, you may, you can, you can be first, middle, or last <laughs> because you are all three potentially. So 
Uh, the last born is often cast as, are you ready for this? Hmm. Manipulators. <laughs> They were the babies of the family who could get away with anything because their parents doted on them. And as adults, some believe that they are spendthrifts and more likely to run up credit card debt than the other groups. So someone put they were the black sheep. Well, and somebody said, yep. And uh, so, yes. And this isn't scientifically proven, but even birth order has diversity. So we want to make sure that there's widely held assumptions. There's an assumption word. Aren't the babies more social? I think so, because I'm much more social than my older brother. So I think that's the case as well. But uh, there are some widely held assumptions about identity markers, such as birth order, gender, age, or even identifying characteristics. And that informs of how many of us think about diversity. So I want you to put in here real quick. I, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And I just want you to put T or F if it's true or false for you. I want to be told when I make a mistake so I don't make it again. True or false if that's true or false for you. Lots of truths. Okay, we're going to do another one. I want the freedom to do things my own way. True or false? Yes, yes. We got a lot of truths on here. True or false? I like being treated as an equal. True, true, true. No matter what your gender, what no matter what your ethnicity, we all want to be treated and validated as equal. And we want to be seen as equal. Um, here's one for you. I do not like to be noticed or singled out for praise. I'm getting some trues and I'm getting some falses in there. So those are things that, you know, and this is only what's true or false for you. And I think you may have a workbook that there are more questions in here. Uh, the question was, I do not like being singled out for praise. Many of us want to be validated. We might not want to be validated in the public arena in the middle of a meeting, but some of us may enjoy that validation in a meeting. But all of us want and need to have some semblance of validation, even if it's an email or things like that, that we get some praise or our boss comes by and has a conversation with us. Some of us may enjoy being validated in a larger group or in a company meeting. So these are things, and someone put, kind of depends, yes, by individuals or small groups, but no in large crowds. So you don't want to be up there winning the big award in front of everybody, I would think. But these are things that we want to definitely take into consideration, even about our birth order diversity, and also how we would like to be treated. Because if we don't know how we want to be treated, then how do we expect someone else to know? So our primary identity, you know, a lot of times comes with maybe how old we are. And some of us, me, are getting older in the workforce. So we're getting ready to start maybe phasing out. And then we've got newer people coming in. So are we uh, judging age? Or are we taking the time to learn from the younger people and then let the younger people learn from our experience? So these are things, just age in a way. What are we saying even about that as well? Um, so thank you very much for, for sharing that. Um, if you're having trouble with the workbook, you want to get in touch with your human resource department. I'm sure that they can get you that information. Also, identity. Are we using our primary identity as that of race or disability or ethnicity or religion or marital status? Maybe we're single. Maybe we're divorced. Maybe we're widowed, widower, or maybe we've uh, never been married, or maybe we're in a same-sex relationship. Also, gender, male and female, you know. Are we judging who gets this the raise or potentially gets the promotion based on gender? Or is it something else? Because often we identify ourselves a certain way and we seem to categorize or label ourselves and possibly others. 
So we want to make sure that we're not labeling people even based on these different types of identities. So even put in your chat or think about what your primary identity may be. Is it your race? Is it your ethnicity? Is it your age? Is it your gender, your ability, your disability, or even something else? And someone put a child of God. And truly, and those, and, uh, and somebody said, I don't like it, but my age and my ability and my race and Jesus. So these are all things that we utilize to identify ourselves, but we are so much more than that. We are someone within us, our spirit, our soul connection, to have the ability to have unique skills and abilities to help, to learn, to share, to teach, and to grow from one another. No matter what our race, our gender, our orientation, our ethnicity, our color may be. And someone put identity is based on morals. Unfortunately, people get shoehorned into their politics these days. That's true too. And someone said my age and my hobby choice. And so these are things, how are we identifying ourselves? And in turn, how are we identifying others? We have a quick, I'm gonna go over this quickly about the Johari witness due to time constraints, because this is a big presentation, but I do wanna talk, touch on just a little bit of everything. But the, on the Johari window, and, and you might want to take a picture of this or write it down quickly, but uh, we have that openness, that stuff about us that is known to ourselves and is also known by others. And then we also have underneath that, that hidden window that we know about, but we don't want anybody else to know about. And then over to the side, we have those things that may not be known to ourselves. It's our blind spots, maybe how we act, how we respond, or those types of things that maybe we're not real sure about or we don't pay attention to, and that's kind of our blind spots, but others recognize it. And then there's the unknown for all of us those that are not known to ourselves and not known to others because we have a lot of information. We're composed of a lot of things within us in this energy based body and reality that we need to make sure that what are we open about that we know about ourselves and others? What is not known to others that we know about ourselves and are we having difficulty or some limiting beliefs about some of those things? Or is that something that scares us about others? Do we put up a, uh, a, um, a um, do we put up a, a type of armor, suit of armor that we don't want, that we keep hidden from other people? Also those blind spots that maybe others recognize about us. Are we willing to ask others maybe some things that they know about us that maybe not be known to us? Are we willing to take that step and ask that question? And then of course, there's the unknown about all of us, but we all have the capabilities and the opportunities to be able to grow and learn more about ourselves and grow into our greatest, truest, highest and best self. And we can become more open. We can understand what those blind spots might be and be able to look or work on those and also be able to understand what some of those hidden things are that we hide even maybe from ourselves. So that's about the Johari wit window that you all can uh, find out more about. You can look that up on uh, the over on the Johari window also. And there's more information about that in your workbook. But I know that we've all heard these statements in the past growing up and being from Tennessee. I know you have birds of a feather. Well, they flock together or there's sugar and spice and everything nice. And then, of course, snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. But we all have a tendency to label or challenge others and ourselves. And we fear change. And it's no, it's no, uh, nothing unknown that we have been through a great deal of change, especially over the last couple of years, but many of us fear change. And are we imposing what I call limiting beliefs on ourselves? Maybe those thoughts, you know, those things we can control. 
What are our thoughts? Are we thinking thoughts such as, I'm not blank, I'm not blank enough. So put in the chat, maybe some thoughts, and this all comes to me so nobody knows who's saying what, but put in the chat, maybe a limiting belief you have about yourself. I'm not smart, strong, capable, pretty enough. I'm not what? Smart enough, skinny enough, educated enough, holy enough, as young as I used to be, motivated enough. These are all things that we can begin to look at for ourselves. And I want you to write this down because I want to help you clear some of those limiting beliefs. I'm not focused enough. So I want you to write this down. There are four steps to helping you to clear some of those limiting beliefs so that you feel better about yourself and you're more confident within yourself. And in today's world, I'm not rested enough. And I get that. So with that being said, one, you decide what that belief may be. And number one, I want you to write this question. Who told me this or where did I hear it? Who told me that I'm not smart, good, sexy, pretty, whatever, enough? Who told me that? And I want you to bear down and figure out if you can remember who may have ever said that to you somewhere in your life. Two, where did I hear it? If you can't remember exactly who told you that, maybe you can remember where you might have heard it. Could have been while you were in elementary school. I don't know, but you bear down and see if you can find where that limiting belief came from. Number three, ask yourself this question. Is it true? So number one, who told me this? Number two, where did I hear it? Number three, is it true? And number four, what would I prefer to believe? So for some of you who put in here, I'm not educated enough, or I'm not pretty enough, or I'm not motivated enough, or I'm not good enough. What does good enough mean? What does good enough mean? You need to bear down into that just a little bit more. But for those of you who put some of those things in there, I want you to write what you prefer to believe about yourself. And I want you to start replacing that I'm not blank enough with a belief that is empowering for you. And these are actually lead into what's called affirmations. I am creative. I am strong. I am healthy. I am are two key words for what you choose to put after them, create your reality. So instead of saying I'm not smart, I'm not healthy, I'm not pretty, I'm not handsome, replace it with something more empowering and stronger and begin reciting those things to yourself. Again, what did I say we could control? Our thoughts, our actions, our words, and our ways of being, thinking, and doing. Because if we can become more stronger and confident within ourselves, we can help to shine that light out to other people and be more accepting of ourselves. And in turn, if we're more accepting and understanding and tolerant of our own self, then we become more accepting, tolerant, and understanding of those around us. So that's kind of the big picture, if you will. And that is how we can look at the big picture and be able to understand both personal and embedded issues that may be within us. Where did we hear those things? Where did we learn those things? Is it true? And what would I prefer to believe? Even when we lump people in those judgmental categories, where did I hear it? Where did I learn it? Um, is it true? And what would I prefer to believe? Are we willing to take the time to get to know others better and bring solutions to share, to have that willingness to LNT to learn new things from one another? And also, are we willing to be an ally and to speak up 
when we hear negative derogatory comments being, being made about someone else? Are we willing to say, we don't say those things around here. We need to be more open and communicative to one another. We need to stand up for anyone who is being marginalized, whether it's socioeconomic status, those things that are underneath the iceberg, or maybe those things that are above the iceberg. We need to be willing to stand up for other people because in turn, wouldn't we want someone to stand up for us? We want to make sure that we're understanding and validating our own feelings and understanding the words we are saying for ourselves and understanding what words we are speaking out to others. And we can always request and understand that change is always going to occur, but we can remove ourselves from being around that person who doesn't seem to get it, who wants to continuously put other people down. And we can state the consequences. If you continue to speak this way or to act this way, these will be the consequences for that. And someone put in here, uh, those prejudices aren't so overt sometimes, and sometimes they are systemic. That's exactly right. And sometimes we got to root them out. And someone else put, I may not have a four-year degree, but I have multiple certifications as well as licenses. I am smart. That is exactly right. We don't necessarily have to have a college education to be smart and intelligent and wise. We can do things that we love to do and gain certifications, grow within ourselves, and continue to grow and help others to do the same. We are all here for a reason or a purpose. We are all diverse and we all bring a piece of the puzzle to create a glorious picture to the table. We can come with continuously rehashing those problems or we can come with creative new solutions brought by a diverse population to mastermind, to brainstorm, to learn from one another and create positive solutions. I cannot say whether things will get better if we see change, but what I can say is they must change if they are to get better. You have an EAP available to you for free counseling and support to employees and eligible family members. It's easily accessible, voluntary and confidential in accordance with the law, and it is a service that can provide support and personal or work-related issues. It is also staffed by experienced professionals. You may consider seeking professional support if you experience any of the following, and that may be sleep problems, sleeping too much, sleeping too little, a lot of interrupted sleep, performance issues at work, or relationship difficulties with family or friends, maybe loss of interest in hobbies that you normally enjoy. If you're having excessive anxiety or worrying more than normal or feeling overwhelmed or sad for more than two weeks, you may want to keep in mind that some of these conditions may warrant a more urgent professional need and you should seek support if you are unsure. This is absolutely a phenomenal uh, uh, service provided for you through your Optum EAP. And if you have questions about that, you can feel free to contact your human resources in your department. I always, I love the interaction and I know that we had a brief time together today. This is such a big diverse topic, but I love the interaction and the opportunity to get to learn from all of you as well. And I always like to end with these words. In the words of Mother Teresa, I alone cannot change the world. However, I can cast a stone across the waters to create many positive ripple effects. I hope today I brought you some aha moments, maybe some new tips, tricks, and techniques and tools of the trade, or maybe even some gentle reminders. And as I finish this quote with Terry J. Walker, I hope that you will continue to cast stones across the waters and continue to create even more positive ripple effects. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I love my Tennessee peaks. You guys take care and thank you so very much.